I'd like you guys to take me back to the time where you met uh, one of Newcastle's music royalty, Christopher Dunn, and uh, what he did for you guys and, and, and what your relationship to that period of your life is now, you know, 20 some years on. I'll, I'll start with you. I'm probably not a great one to start with because uh, I think that happened like before I was in the band. Oh really? Oh okay, so do you remember meeting Dunny? Or was it more, should I be chatting to you, Paul? You can start it, I can remember it. I didn't want to start with the front man because that's so cliched, you know what I mean? But I'm going to come yeah. over, I'll chat to you, Paul. Uh, do you not remember meeting Dunny? No, I do, I do. Um, my The first time I remember hearing from Chris was uh, I was living in a share house with Julian, who was the original bass player in Something for Kate. Yeah. And we just got a phone message from, you know, Chris Dunn from Sony Music uh, wanting to kind of get together and talk to us. So that, that was the first contact. And then... We met him at a show. He came to one of our shows and introduced himself, and then, and then we were, you know, going out for dinner and talking about record deals, and and <laughs> he eventually signed us to Murmur Music. That's um, exciting times, though. Yeah. What, how did that feel at the time? Did you, I suppose, nerves were there as well as excitement? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we were all like 19 years old, mm. so, and we like we'd only been a band for like just on a year or so. So it was, you know, it was definitely exciting. Um, he did, he scared, scared me because we were sitting at the dinner table and he was like, you're going to be the next Nirvana. And I'm like, no, I'm not. i got a job. What am I going to do? And so, yeah, I remember Paul went off to the toilet and I just was like, ran straight after him and was like, what am I going to do about my job? We're going to be the next Nirvana. And that was what he said, that I remember. Which we weren't. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I would say this, though, that your songs now have become more than just... Uh, uh, more than just a commodity, more than something that just, you know, you, you sold on a CD. I would argue that a lot of your music has become, and this is so cliched, a fabric of people's lives. You know, they remember it. They can pinpoint parts of their lives from the music you guys have created. And I suppose that brings up the, the word nostalgia. And I wanted to ask you what your relationship is with the material that, you know, kicked this thing off and really pushed you guys into the stratosphere. Can you, do you mind telling me about that? Um, I mean, I, I, I think really, like, we don't think about it that much. Yeah, right. It's just the passage of time. You know, you make music, time passes. When enough time passes, it becomes something that people remember from a, a period in their life X number of years ago. But it's just the passage of time. We, we, we're always thinking about now and thinking about what we're going to do next. Yeah. So we don't dwell on it too much. We certainly don't think of ourselves as being a you know a nostalgia yeah. kind of band but obviously you know it, it is true you can't avoid the fact that we've been around for over 20 years now so we've been in people's lives for a long time so obviously nostalgia is an element yeah. um but it's not you know we choose to think about what we're doing next though and and you know it's just it's the passage of time what are you going to do <laughs> okay so given that i'm going to throw to this side now <laughs> Given that, and man, I've seen you drum in a number of different outfits. Ben Salter at Big Sound a few years ago. What a great gig. Why, I suppose the question is, what keeps you coming back to something for Kate? You know, do you, it's not a have to anymore, I would imagine. It's a want to. So what, where does the want come from? Is it the relationship with each other or the relationship to what you created? It's just what I do. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just what I've always known and... It's what I love doing, and what we all love doing is getting together and playing. Um, yeah, it's just, it's like a part of me. I don't know. Do you not get a choice? You just, you, you, you come whether you like it or not, or? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think as Clint said, it's, it's, it's like getting out of bed. It's what we do when we get out of bed. It's, yeah. it's all that we know. And, um, and, yeah, I mean, I hate to just repeat Clint, but yeah, I think we love it, and we we don't really know anything else, and it's what we gravitate towards as three people, um, and yeah, it's it's our life, I suppose. So, yeah. Oh, well, thanks so much. I got a congratulations. The the catalogue of work you guys have put out is just uh, the impressive is the wrong word. Congratulations, and to keep be, be able to keep doing it. Thanks so much for your time, and have a great gig. Cheers. Thank you.